Thanks to ABCAM for inviting me to give this webinar today. Um, as, uh, as Vicki said, I'm an assistant professor at the University of Washington in Seattle. Uh, this is, and this is a, a photo of me in the mountains near Seattle. It's a wonderful place to live. Um, unlike most of America, we're not digging out from a bunch of snow right now, so that's also very nice. Uh, and I'm going to talk today about cell death. And uh, of course, cells are alive. We know this, and uh, they can die. And uh, the sort of historical, classical way that we've thought about cell death uh, has been as a dichotomy between two different forms of death. Uh, one is this unprogrammed process of necrosis, and the other is the programmed uh, and very well described process of apoptosis. And when we say programmed, we mean uh, a means for a cell to die uh, sort of on purpose, a form of cellular suicide that's carried out by specific enzymes within the cell. And uh, this is a, a figure from way back in 1995, so this is uh, sort of a very, uh, as I said, classical view of cell death. Uh, necrosis is the unordered killing of cells by uh, a chemical or environmental damage. So essentially you can think of it as something like uh, adding bleach to your tissue culture dish would induce lots of necroptosis. Freeze thaw is another uh, form of, of, of necrosis. Um, uh, uh, toxins can trigger necrosis. Uh, on the other side of the coin, we have apoptosis, and this is a, a, a program process, as I said. This is a, a, a form of cellular suicide that's uh, carried out by and really defined by the activation of these caspase proteases. So the caspases are a family of proteases, so protein-cutting enzymes. They're cysteine proteases uh, that cut their substrates at aspartic acid. Uh, and, uh, and apoptosis is required for normal development, uh, immunity, and tumor suppression. It's a fundamental part of, uh, of, of cell, of, uh, of normal organismal function, and of, of the sort of cellular life cycle. Several billion cells die in our bodies by apoptosis every day. Uh, apoptosis is defined by these distinct hallmarks, and these are, are again, a function of the activation of these caspase proteases. Uh, when the caspases become active in a cell, that cell will shrink. Uh, its membrane will, will bleb and form these sort of uh, distinctive uh, blistery um, features. The nucleus will condense, and uh, when this happens in vivo, uh, these changes lead to the, uh, the expression of find me and eat me signals on the dying cell. The dying cell is then rapidly recognized by a phagocytic white blood cell. Um, this is, a, is, is depicted here in, um, in, uh, in this uh, sort of artist's rendition um, of a, a phagocyte recognizing an apoptotic cell. And, uh, and uh, for this reason, because of this, this sort of um, distinctive uh, program associated with apoptosis, we generally think of apoptotic cell death as a tidy and non-inflammatory way to eliminate cells from the organism. So this, again, happens many billions of times in our bodies every day and that doesn't really cause much of an inflammatory or immune response. So, uh, you know, I, I, I mentioned this sort of uh, dichotomy between apoptosis and necrosis. Remember, this is classical unprogrammed necrosis as a, as a sort of historical or classical way of thinking about this because we now understand that there are other ways for a cell to die in a programmed manner. There are other cell death programs. Um, two of those that are, that, are, uh, that are receiving a lot of attention now our pyroptosis, this is uh, mediated by uh, different members of the caspase family um, and in, in response to, uh, to certain immune stimuli, mainly in macrophages. Uh, and then this other form of program cell death, necroptosis, which is going to be uh, the focus of much of my talk today. Um, and, uh, you know, again, just to sort of uh, from, a, from a broad uh, overview perspective, uh, we generally sort of think of, of apoptosis as a, as a non-inflammatory uh, silent form of death, and we think of these other forms of death as uh, potentially inflammatory or at the very least sort of uh, crisis forms of death that will mainly seem to occur um, in response to infection or stress uh, in, in when, when, uh, when a tissue needs to uh, sort of ring the alarm bells. So I'm going to talk first a little bit about the extrinsic pathway of apoptosis and then how uh, some of the same signals involved in apoptotic signaling can also trigger this other form of death, uh, necroptosis, that I've, just, uh, that I've just introduced. So extrinsic apoptosis is so named because it's the activation of the apoptotic pathway by signals that come from outside of, uh, of the cell. Um, notable among these is activation of the death receptors, FAST, trail receptor, and TNF receptor on the cell surface by the cognate ligands. When these receptors are activated um, in, in various ways, they can uh, then activate, recruit and activate 
Uh, an initiator cat phase, cat phase eight, and I'll talk a lot more about cat phase eight uh, in the later part of the of the presentation. But in this apoptotic pathway, cat phase eight activation uh, can then um, go on to activate members of the BCL2 protein family. Uh, these proteins have the job of uh, determining whether to, and then eventually going ahead with the permeabilization of the outer mitochondrial membrane. Permeabilization of this membrane uh, allows the release of proteins that are normally sequestered inside that membrane. Among these is, uh, is cytochrome C. Cytochrome C then binds to an adapter, uh, APAP1, and uh, activates a full-blown caspase cascade, leading, as I said, to uh, apoptotic cell death. And we can, uh, we can just uh, show you some cells dying by apoptosis. This is a, these are HeLa cells expressing um, uh, histone GFP to mark their nuclei. And, uh, and they've been uh, triggered to undergo apoptosis by a combination of PNF and cyclohexamide. Um, this is a very sort of classical uh, apoptotic stem. And you can see here the cells uh, shrink and they bleb. They have this sort of uh, very typical blistering morphology. And, uh, and um, then much later, they undergo what we call secondary necrosis, where their, their, uh, their membranes actually lose uh, integrity. But as I said, normally uh, in vivo, we would expect that these dying cells would be recognized in phagocyte toes taken up by, uh, by a, a phagocyte uh, long before they lose membrane integrity. And so these cells would be rapidly eliminated, and this would be a sort of non-inflammatory uh, process. 